is called Calvary, and that person is called Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 13, the Bible says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there are few that find it. Today I just want to start a little short series of messages, only two sermons, on the subject of the highways of life. By the way, there's only two of those highways. One is the highway to hell, and the other one is the highway to heaven. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there are only two roads in life, the road to heaven and the road to hell. Everybody is on one of those roads. Every person in this building today is on one of those roads. We're either on the road to hell or we're on the road to heaven. There's no other road that you can take. These are the only two roads in life that one can walk. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing funny if you're walking on the road to hell. Some people make light of that. Some people make fun of that. But there's nothing funny about it. There's nothing amusing about it. There's nothing comical about being on the road to hell. In fact, it is a very serious matter. It is one so serious that Jesus is speaking to us here about these two roads And if you have a red letter edition of the Bible, you will see that that simply means Jesus is speaking here. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a serious matter. It is one that you and I should give great consideration to if you're on the road to hell. It would be well for each of us today to allow the Holy Spirit to look into our hearts and Show us what road that we're on. You see, as we examine our hearts, whichever road we were on will determine the place we will end up. There's three things that are evident about the highway to hell. First of all, Jesus tells us about the entrance to this highway. How do you get on it? How in the world does one get on the highway to hell? Well, friend, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you're on the highway to hell. You see, once we're born, there comes a time when we become aware of our sinfulness. We become aware that we have sinned against God. And whatever age that is can be different. Some people say it's 12 years old, but that's not right. Some people develop quicker than others. Some people have more insight than others and it's different ages for different children. But there comes a time in every child's life when they realize that they have sinned against God. God puts that in our heart. And it is at that moment, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I become aware and we also become responsible for our sins. And it is that moment that we either choose the highway to heaven or the highway to hell. But thank God the Holy Spirit continues to speak to us as we travel this road. He doesn't just let us make that decision and that's it. It's over and done with. No, the Holy Spirit of God continues throughout our life to speak to us. Perhaps He uses a sermon. Perhaps He uses an example of somebody's life. Perhaps He uses someone to stop by and witnesses to us and tell us about the Lord. But over and over and over again, the Holy Spirit of God reminds us that we are accountable for our sins and that we must make a choice. 
as to whether we continue on the highway to hell or we exit and get on the highway to heaven. So if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior and you have come to the age of accountability to where you realize that you are a sinner in the face of God, then most likely you're on the highway to hell. Now there's a couple of things that I want us to notice about the entrance of this highway. First of all, according to the scripture, this entrance, the entrance to this road is convenient. Listen to what Jesus says in verse 13. Jesus says, wide is the gate. And ladies and gentlemen, the fact that Jesus said it is a wide gate means it is a convenient gate. There comes a time in life when you and I come to a fork in the road in our life and we must decide which road we will take or which road we will continue on. The highway to hell is a wide gate, Jesus says. This simply tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no restrictions, there's no requirements in order to enter the highway to hell. In fact, you can take whatever you want to through that gate. It is a convenient highway. All of the baggage, all of the sins, anything you want, you can carry through that gate. It's a convenient way. But Jesus says, not only is the entrance of this road convenient, but he also tells us it's crowded because it is convenient and the entrance is wide. There's a crowd that is traveling on this road. Jesus says, many there be that go in by it. What does that mean? That means that it is an attractive way to a lot of people. You see, ladies and gentlemen, by nature, you and I want to be with the crowds. We don't like to be isolated. We don't like to be different. We want to be like everybody else. Now, I want to tell you that there's a lot of people today who are spending money that they don't have trying to impress friends that don't like them on this road to hell. We want to be just like everybody else. But ladies and gentlemen, just because there's a crowd on the road doesn't mean it's safe. You see, since there is no limitations, since there is no restrictions on this road, this highway to hell, you can do anything you like, anything you please. Whatever you do is fine on the broad road, through the wide gate, on the road to hell. But not only does Jesus tell us about the entrance to this highway, but he also tells us about the enticements of traveling this highway. Why would anyone want to travel a broad road that the Bible says ends in destruction or ends in hell? Well, one of the reasons is because this road entices because it is laced with popularity. Jesus said in this statement, many there be which go in by it. What does he mean by many? He means the majority of this world, sadly, is on the highway to hell. I wish I could say this morning that the majority of the people of this world are Christians. I wish I could say the majority of the people of this world are on the highway to heaven. I wish I could say the majority of of the people in this world is going to heaven. But sadly, that is not the case. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, the majority of people are on the highway to hell. Why is that? Because it's a popular place. I mean, if you want popularity, this is the road that you will travel. If you're a Christian, if you're a child of God, you won't be with the in crowd of this world. It's not popular to be a Christian and it never has been and never will be. 
because people desire to be popular with their peers, with other people they know, with friends and family, they choose to travel this broad road that Jesus says there are many on this road. Sometimes we get the idea that just because the crowds are doing it, then it must be all right. You see, we think just because everyone else is doing it, it makes it right. But that may be a good reason to avoid it. I remember when our boys were smaller and they would come and say, Dad, we want to do this and that. And I'd say, no, you can't do that. They said, well, so-and-so's doing it. I said, well, I can't help it. You're not. I said, if so-and-so jumped off of a cliff, would you follow them? You see, ladies and gentlemen, just because the crowds are doing it does not always mean that it's right. In fact, many times, if you have two things before you, one is easy and the other hard, probably 99 times out of 100, to do the hard thing is the better thing than to do the easy one. On the narrow way, there's only a few. But on the broad way, the Bible says that there are many. I want you to know this morning that if you take up your cross and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be times that you will walk a lonely path. There'll be times when you'll feel like you're the only one at your work that loves Jesus. You're the only one in your class that loves Jesus. You're the only one, perhaps, in your home that loves Jesus and sometimes carrying a cross and following Jesus Christ sometimes can be a hard way. You see, not many are traveling that way. Well, let me tell you something about walking the narrow way. When you and I feel lonely and all alone and isolated, look down because there's another set of footprints that are walking with you. Those footprints are stained with blood. It is our Savior who's walking the narrow way. Jesus doesn't walk the broad way. Jesus walks the narrow way. Jesus doesn't walk the highway to hell. Jesus walks the highway to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter how isolated you may feel, no matter how lonely you may feel, just remember this. Jesus is always there if you're walking the highway to heaven. So the enticement for people to walk this road is popularity. It is pleasure, but then thirdly, it is also pride. Think about the pleasures, if you will, on this road. It's no wonder that the broad way is a well-traveled road. The lust of the flesh can be enjoyed on this road and anything that appeals to the flesh will draw you if you're not careful. People can indulge in any pleasure of their hearts on this broad road. They can let their passions run wild doing whatever their appetite craves on this broad road. Any sin you desire to do is okay on this broad road. Immorality is okay on this broad broad road. Iniquity is all right on this broad road. Drugs are okay on this broad road. Alcohol is okay on this broad road. Perversions of all kind is all right on this broad road. Pornography is acceptable on this broad road. Ladies and gentlemen, lined upon the paths of this broad way strung along the paths of this road is all of these things all the pleasures of the world are on the broad road that leads the Bible says to destruction or to hell the enticement is popularity the enticement is pleasure the enticement is pride ladies and gentlemen we are a proud people we don't want to say that We have to ask God to forgive us of anything. We have pride. We think we don't need anything from God. But the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride cometh before destruction. Pride comes before the fall. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is pride that keeps the masses and the multitudes entering the broad road instead of the narrow road. We have too much pride to admit that we've sinned against God and we're in desperate need of a Savior. Friend, you can cling to your pride if you want to, but it'll let you down on the broad road to hell because the Bible says at the end of this road there's nothing but destruction. We see the entrance of this road. We see the enticements of this road. And finally, we see the end of this road. Notice again in verse 13, Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads where? To destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Ladies and gentlemen, we see here where this road goes. Where does this highway, this broad road lead to? First of all, the Bible says it leads to deception. You see, if you travel the broad way, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be deceived. In fact, you are being deceived. The longer you stay on this road, the more and more deceived you will become. Because every time you push the Holy Spirit away, every time God speaks to your heart and you push Him away, your heart gets harder and harder and you are dealing with your destiny because you never know when that last opportunity, that last time you push God away and you slip out into eternity. I have had people that on a Sunday sat under the sound of my voice and little did they know before the next Sunday they would be in eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, every time you have a birthday, the older you get, the more set in your ways. It's harder and harder for you to come to God. And the devil will deceive you. Oh, you've got next Sunday. You've got next week. You've got next month. You've got next year. You're young. You've got plenty of time. But I would challenge any one of you today to go to the graveyard and walk around and you will find people in that graveyard of all ages. And you don't know when your time's going to run out. But one of these days, the Bible says it is. Because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. One day, your time is going to run out. And if you have not made the right choice, if you have not exited off of the road to hell, the broad way that has a wide gate, then the Bible says your road will end with destruction. I'll never forget several years ago preaching in a revival down in North Myrtle Beach. And that night I gave the gospel invitation and a 75-year-old man that had been blind all of his life came out of the pew being led by his sister. And that man came and gave his life to Jesus Christ. But ladies and gentlemen, did you know the odds that were stacked against him? There's not a lot of 75-year-old people that come to know Christ. Praise God they do. But they're the exception. Because again, the older you get, the more set in your ways you get, the more less you're likely to change. Many people die in their sins at that age. But thank God there are exceptions. You see, the longer you go, the more deceived you become. And the devil rocks you to sleep in his rocking chair and you think everything's going to be all right. And little did you know that that day would be the last day you would ever have on the earth. And when you die, listen to me, when you die, don't you listen to nobody else tell you that somebody can pray you out of hell. That somebody can rescue you out of hell. Listen to me. When you die, your eternity is sealed and set. There's not enough preachers in this county to get together to pray you out of hell. Your eternity, the die has been cast. 
And many people are deceived in thinking that it's going to be all right, that God is going to make an exception for them. They're deceived into thinking that it really doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't really matter where you go or what you do. You see, the motto on the broad road is, do whatever you please. Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 12, there's a way that seems right, but the end thereof is death and destruction. You see, it seems right, but it's wrong. Let me say that again. It seems right, but it's wrong. You see, those who are on the broad road consider those who are different from them as a bunch of fools. Christians are to be considered as religious freaks, religious fanatics. They feel that Christians are people who go overboard and they're narrow-minded and a bunch of bigots. You see, the world would just have you to relax. Live. Let live. You're only going through one time, grab all the gusto you can. That sounds good. But Jesus says that kind of life ends in destruction, which means separation from God forever and forever. You see, they just say, life is short. Drink and be merry. It's a way that seems right. But that way is deceiving. And do you know who's deceiving those people? The devil. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and the father of it. And he will tell you and promise you a lot of stuff. But Jesus says... When he's promised all he can promise, the end of that road, the end of those promises, the end of that deception is death. It is separation from God forever. So the end of this highway ends in deception. Jesus said it also ends in destruction. The highway to hell will lead you down a road of damnation and destruction. What does Jesus mean when he says this is a broad road that leads to destruction? Jesus is simply defining it as a place where you and I don't want to go. Listen to the descriptions that Jesus gives throughout the scriptures and write these down if you would like. For instance, Jesus describing this place called hell. The end of the road where you will find yourself if you die without God. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 3, Jesus describes this place as a bottomless pit. In Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15, Jesus describes this place as a lake of fire. In the gospel of Mark, Jesus describes this place as an unquenchable fire where the worm dieth not. And in the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, he describes it as a tormenting flame with an unquenchable thirst. In other words, it is a place where people want to die. They beg to die, they desire to die, and yet they cannot die. It is the place where ungodly people end up without God. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus tells a story of two men, the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible says that Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died. And being in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And he saw Abraham and Lazarus there in Abraham's bosom. And he said, Father Abraham, would you send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water 
and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in these flames. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how far it is from heaven to hell. And this guy didn't ask for a glass of water. He didn't ask for a cup of water. He didn't ask for a gallon of water. He said, I'm so tormented. I'm so thirsty. If you would just have Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, and when you get home, do that, and you don't have much water left. And how much water would there be by the time he traveled from Abraham's bosom to hell, waded through the flames of hell and got to this man, maybe one particle, maybe, of water would be left. And that's all he was asking for. Don't bring me a cup. Don't bring me a glass. Don't bring me a gallon. Just whatever's left from dipping the tip of his finger in water and coming to where I am and cooling my tongue. I'll take that much relief. Jesus describes this place as a horrible place. The Bible says it is a place of tormenting flame, of unquenchable thirst. People begging to die, wanting to die desiring to die, and yet cannot die. Hell is a place where the flame constantly burns, and yet the person never burns up. It's the way of the ungodly. It is a way that seemed right. So many hundreds and thousands and millions of people thought it was right. Oh, they were having fun. They were kicking it up. They were having a great time. They were partying, man. But Jesus said it led to death. It led to destruction. It led to eternal damnation. So let me ask you this morning. As we think about the highways of life, there's only two. There's the highway to hell and the highway to heaven. Which one are you on? And if you're on the highway to hell, I've got good news for you. You can exit. There's an exit. You can get off. All you've got to do is put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you can exit off the road to hell. You don't have to go to destruction. You don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to be tormented forever and forever. You don't have to be thirsty for always. Today you can exit. And the person that will help you exit is Jesus Christ. And my question to you today is which road are you on? If you're on the road to hell, friend, before you come to the end of it, make sure you exit. I believe God brought you here today so you could exit. Jesus loves you. He died for you. Today, if you will come and give him your life, I'm telling you, he will change your life forever. He will take you off the road to hell, put you on the road to heaven that we will talk about next next week. And instead of ending in destruction, one day you will end in the presence of God.